All right, we're at San Diego Comic Con 2019. We're here talking Transformers. Behind us is the, uh, I think the talk of the show, Unicron, uh, the, the biggest Transformer you've ever done. Yeah. I, so, it, okay, so it's come out from HasLab. Yeah, it's crowdfunded. Yep. Yeah. I got it. I got it. We're just gonna dive right into that. Is uh, you know, how did the concept even come around? Because it is a massive figure. I mean, like Omega Supreme's over here, and that's a huge figure. But you know, we're just sit there and be like, you know. I, I, yeah, I just got to hear the story of how this came about. Uh, oh, someone just hit your stand. Ah, okay. <laughs> so the, my feeling is you can't half do Unicron. You got it. You got to do it big. You have to make it bigger than Fort Max. So you have to make it not just bigger, but it has to be like big enough that it feels like a godlike. Um, the other thing too is you have to make it screen accurate because you, I wanted to make sure, or the whole team wanted to make sure that it's not just like Warp Cybertron fans that like it, but also like guys that collect just masterpiece or people just like 80s pop culture. Like it's gotta, it's gotta fulfill a lot of um, a lot of needs, and it's got to check a lot of boxes. And I think being able to bring something like this to life is cool because this is like our this is our one shot to do it. Like you. Again, you can't have to Unicron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and then when you think about it, like Kunihiro San, the the um, designer and engineer at Takara Tomi, who I partnered with to bring this thing to life and figure out how it how it transforms, um, he touched on the idea that this thing, because it's a sphere, it involves all sorts of really complicated geometry. When you think about all those um, uh, tectonic plates, if you will, they're all. They're all lashed together in a really super intricate way, and they they stay together. So none of them come apart. Like it all kind of unfurls and gets to come back together. Um, and then the weight, the sheer weight of this thing, it weighs 19 pounds. And uh, we had to design a stand for it. And then and then the robot, the robot to pose it out, it, it is self-supporting. You can still use the stand on the robot mode, but um, there's a lot that went into this thing, even from an engineering standpoint. And uh, to be honest, we've been working on it for almost two years now already. That's gonna be my next question. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it's hard when you're this excited about something to keep it secret. So like people were coming up to me last year, it's like, oh, you know, Predaking's cool, but what we should really do is Unicron. And I'm like, no, we're kind of no, doing no. it, but <laughs> but you know that what's great about a platform like uh, Haslab and, and Pulse is that this something like this is it's almost like an impossible dream. Not only how big it is, but also like how physically big the box is going to be and stuff like this. This is one of those things you can only ship to consumers and only only make it happen if people believe in it. Right. And that's why like being able to crowdfund this thing through the Pulse is like it's dream come true. It's really cool. So it's, it's, it's interesting with HasLab and then Hasbro also has got the Hasbro Pulse that's coming out or your Hasbro Pulse um, system. Like, how does that open up for you as designing? Like, you, you obviously, you know, rest in peace, Toys R Us is gone or coming back and all that, but like. There's all these different channels now, which has to be able to open you up a little bit as designers to do things maybe a little bit different, to be able to go directly to consumers that you know might not sell at Toys R Us, but it might sell online. You know, how does, does that change your thinking at all? Oh, it absolutely does. You know, when you think even about some of our partnerships that we're doing, like we have that uh, Echotron at GameStop. You know, there's. It gives us license to try all sorts of different things because, you know, you're right. We uh, as toy collectors, we're we're in a we're in a different world now where you can um, you can go shopping on your phone and right. stuff like that. So we wanted to try to um, offer different retailers different different pieces and pieces of that giant story. But then as a manager and designer, you have to kind of have all of those different pieces feed back into each other. So. We, um, our brick and mortar stores like, you know, Walmart and Target and uh, they're, they're still able to kind of have this amazing on-shelf presence because there's, there's such a satisfying feeling to be able to walk into the toy aisle and you see all that stuff there. Or like when you see that first, that wave come in and it's like, oh my God, there's reflector. But um, there's no denying like that the, the appeal of online shopping is like, oh my God, I got it. And you know. The, the feeling when something you see something sold out already, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> As I was walking over, I was buying a toy online that was going on sale at like 9 o'clock or noon. Or whatever. Oh, it's, I was it, like, and the idea of pre-ordering and stuff like that. So it, it, it does change the way we do business. It's very exciting. Uh, so the, the thing that always stands out, we kind of talk about it uh, every year that we, we do the interview. Um, the thing that really stands out about, about Transformers to me and what you all doing is you're, you're telling a, t a story on top of being toys. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which is very unique. Like, 
other toys, like the, the Marvel stuff, like great figures, but they reflect a story that's already been done. Right. Uh, like the Avengers line is based off of the Avengers movie, but you guys are really actually creating a story as you're going. So, you know, how's that work when it comes to the toy design, coming up with these stories? And, and the other big thing, and I'm going to ask the Transformers TCG interview is the same thing, is your story really goes across so many things. Siege is not just the toys, but it's also part of the, the TCG aim. Right. Um, so it's a very, like, it's a unique thing that you don't see very often. Yeah, we, um, story is really important uh, for us on Transformers. It's one of those things that, especially with the War for Cybertron trilogy, we, um, we put a lot of thought early on, you know, like, what is our, what are we going to do for three years? And we try to figure that story out. Um, you know, what universes are we going to touch on? What is the journey? What is, what is it going to look like? And to be honest, there, there was a point, uh, God, several years ago now, where if you walked into my office, it was like crazy. They had like a string and stuff all over my wall, and I'd bring people into my office to convince them. What's that? You guys actually come up with a story? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's certain assumptions that happen. Like, so there's things that happen uh, that are new, but we do have to lean back on on some assumptions from G1 because we don't want to we don't want to throw out the old story because we're dealing with um, we're dealing with people's uh, memories and a lot of, a lot of a lot of these great pieces of Transformers. Uh, makes sense. We want to keep those things going, but we want to allow the universe to grow in a way that feels organic. And then a lot of times that um, the toy line reflects that and, and how things grow and change. And we start to get influenced by, you know, uh, Drew and the TCG guys and comic book guys. Like we, we all start feeding off each other. It's very exciting. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I don't want to take too much of your time on that. So, like, you, you've revealed a whole bunch of new figures here at the San Diego. Um, you know, how do you actually go back to decide which ones that you want to do? And how, more importantly, like, how do they fit in that story? Like, you've got Refractor, um, Astro Train, clear. Like, Astro Train was one of my figures that I loved, and Refractor was one of the figures <laughs> that I loved. Uh, to see both of those, I was super exciting. But like, you know, what's that kind of thought process to build into it? Well, we, uh, like I mentioned, we, we, like right now, I'm, we just, we, back at the office, we pretty much just wrapped 2020. We are, are a good chunk of the way into 2021. We're starting to think about 22. And when we do that, we sort of map out what characters, and we, we almost bring some in, depending on, like, if we hear at an event like Comic-Con, like, oh, man, you guys should bring back Ape Face. And we're like, all right, maybe we bring back Ape Face. So, like, if you, if, like, that's one of the reasons we come to things. Like, we... Fans actually do have it. Yeah, like, you literally, like, you think you're just walking up and talking to me. Like, I might hear somebody say Ape Face, like, 20 times in one day, and I'm, I'm going to remember that and be like, all right. So he was already on my board because I, like, you know, we hadn't done it. So I, I bring him in. I think it's kind of a... A lot of it has to do with, um, you know, how many new characters we have slated for the year, which guys make sense, which ones haven't we refreshed in a couple of years. But there's, like, a gigantic algebraic equation that we've kind of set out. It's super geeky, but yeah, I could go on and on. But. Um, so the other thing that kind of stands out with me about Siege is obviously it's taking place on Cybertron. Uh, it's a lot of the old school designs, like the Seekers really stand out to me. Um, it's such a cool design. But the other thing that, that it's kind of fascinating is with Bumblebee, the film that came out, you saw those old designs on screen. Yeah. Uh, was that on purpose or was that just completely random that it kind of synced up that these toys were coming out at that same time? Well, I think one of the benefits of working with a, uh, Paramount, especially with a um, director like Travis, is Travis is like, he's like from my generation. Like he, he loves Transformers. Yeah, he loves Transformers, grew up with G1, and he understands, like, much like when we worked on uh, War for Cybertron, like, there are these wonderful emotional moments that are subtle, like sound wave ejecting a tape from his chest. Like, oh, yeah. it's not, you know, it's not just the transforming sound or the Autobot sigil or anything like that. Like, there's moments that we all share. Yeah. And and Travis, like, keyed into that, you know? The colors of Soundwave, um, you know, the look of, of Optimus Prime. And uh, it's exciting to see um, the influence of something as powerful as G1 Transformers making its way on a theater. So I think it was just like the perfect storm of creativity, and it worked out great. Yeah, yeah I did. Uh, so I said there's a whole bunch of new figures out. Uh, was there any that you're really excited to do? Oh, Omega Supreme, hands down. So Omega Supreme uh, was one of those things I still remember as a kid getting him for Christmas. and uh, But it was also one of those things that, like, it, it was really cool. But um, I remember thinking, like, oh, he's too short. And, like, so it, 
it was exciting to be able to get him really physically big and and make him just one of the best expressions of Mega Supreme ever. You know, like he's a great rocket. We didn't change things. We just tried to make him bigger, make him better, make him more poseable. And that was probably the most satisfying experience of this past year. I always appreciate talking to you. It's one of my favorite things at San Diego Comic Con. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. until next year, I'm sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games. You name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.